Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anubhav Learning Series. In this video, we will go ahead and discuss how to implement a simple REST service post operation. In last two part of this video series, we have seen the implementation of REST service, why it is necessary, how it is advantageous over the OData services, and we have also seen in the last session implementing the end-to-end -end GET operation using the REST service in ABAP programming in S4 HANA system. In this video, we will go ahead and look at implementing the post uh, implementation from the REST service side. So by far we have seen what are the advantages, what is the REST service, and we've also talked about the resource handler as well as resource provider classes. If you have not seen my part one and part two of this video, I will put the link into the description of this video also, you can hit the I button on the top to go to the part one and part two of the video. So let's get started. We straight away jump to the system. And what we have done by far is implemented the get call. We were able to make a call also into the postman over here. And now it's time that I can create a new order from scratch. So basically, I want to pass this data, copy this data and pass it, pass it in a post request to my entity set Anubhav and then I want to give this data as a input over here and make this post call so that this order can be created in a system so maybe I want to just you know pass a blank order ID of course because that's something which system will generate by itself and that then system will assign also this order number automatically and also a unique order ID automatically and then based on this data system would create the order for us so let's go into the system and see how can we uh, how can we achieve this in our system so i'm going to go back as i mentioned in the last session we're going to implement it everything related to this anubhav entity in uh, in the resource provider class so let's go ahead and implement the post here we select and go for change and here we will first step is going to be read the data coming from client of course in step two of course the data will be passed from the client in, in the JSON format so you need to parse the JSON uh, into ABAP collection or ABAP structure of course this is extremely important and then we need to just modify the data add the runtime information like uh, generation of order ID and order number at runtime including the current date whatsoever data comes we don't rely on that we're going to generate this in inside and then step number four we are going to just create the data uh, into database table persist this and then of course just return response with the order id that's what we want to return back as a response so all of these steps let's do one by one so step number one let's receive the incoming data so first of all with the request we need to get the entity and from the entity we have to get this data out so what I'll do is I'll call data uh, object of entity equals to request object we talked about this request object in last class it's an automatic object which comes when you using those inheritances so get entity so this gives me the entity now and then we are going to get the data for this entity so this data is coming in the string format always so hello entity and please get me the data the string format data and of course this string will be a JSON string because we know that we're going to support the JSON passing the JSON from the postman uh, to post the data and once this JSON is available, it's time that we parse or convert this JSON to an internal structure. So let's declare a structure according to the database table. My BIP is application, so ZBIP underscore orders. That's my database table structure. And now it's time again using the UI5 API to deserialize this JSON. So we will do a deserialize, that reverse process of what we did in the get. Uh, converting from uh, the JSON to the data type yeah very important step and let's do that 
pass this JSON string here and pass this structure over here. So we're going to get this data now in our ABAP structure. And now it's time to change uh, the ABAP structure data. So of course we need to generate the order ID at runtime. And for that I'm going to use in a class in ABAP called UUID class. This is one of the class which can generate a random ID, 32 character random ID, and it has a method generate 32 bit, 32 character ID. And we are also going to select max order number from um, ZBIP underscore orders table into my variable. I'll be max ID and I'm just going to add that order a number incremented with one yeah I'm just going to add that in our order number field so order number max ID plus one exactly and now this order is ready to be posted of course we also set the order date as today's date Let's also set that. And now it's time to just fire insert into database table. Fantastic. Let's return the data finally out. For that, we're going to do exactly the same thing like we did earlier. We're going to get this entity and we're going to set the data string back. and we pass this new string so for that again deserialization should happen uh, final result and i'm going to pass that over here by converting this lsbip deserialize uh, we did deserialize and now we do serialize again to pass this data serialize method and generate the code so pass our structure data and that's going to receive the final string out here awesome save this up fantastic and now it's time to check syntax check or oh, we have an issue of course this is not declared yet let's declare our data type I will be sharing this entire code with all of you. Please check the description of this video to download this complete source code. Let's activate. And wow, the post is ready. It's time to test it in action. I'm going to go back and we are going to test it. So before you test post, very important. You cannot post to SAP system just like that. It's extremely important to generate something called a CSRF token. So before you make a post to SAP system using Postman or external tools, it's mandatory to obtain a token. And this token you have to obtain via making a GET call first. So you have to make a GET call with passing in the header X hyphen CSRF hyphen token equals to fetch. And you have to make this GET call first of all. And now if you go to header, you have received a token. Remember, this token has a validity date. Uh, sorry, valid. it is valid for a certain amount of time. So it's not like you obtain a token today and you use it forever. You hard code. No, it is has to be obtained every time. So first, get called with credentials. You have to pass to your entity. Gives you some data that we don't care. What is important is pass in header XSR of token fetch. It gets you this token information. Take this token information and then switch to the post call on this entity. And now you have to pass this token in the post call. That's extremely important. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. Okay. You're going to get an error. And now maybe I uncheck this. I'll not pass it. I'll just keep it, but not pass it. And I'll go to body and pass my data. So here I'm passing some order information to create a new order in the system. And let me just put here Donald Trump. And we're going to pass it as 999 US dollars. Let me just cross check if do I have any order for customer Donald Trump. 
So I'm going to go back to a database table in S4 system. And let's go to the orders table and enter the customer name as Donald. Execute. You see Donald star. Execute. Don't have any. All right. Don't have any order with Donald inside. Superb. So now it's time to make a post call from the postman. So let's say post. Post this data, please. And remember, just now I unchecked this XSRF. So let's click on uh, send. And you see it gives me an error that CSRF token is failed, validation failed. So of course, you have to include that in the header and you know already how to obtain this. This is extremely important while working with SAP systems. And now I can say send. And of course, I think it would have posted now my results. And I can go back to database table and execute here. Uh, oops, I don't see the record. So maybe we can quickly debug here if it is if the call is coming to the post request. So I'm going to set external breakpoint. Let's make a post call again to the system. And hopefully it will be touching our debugger into the resource provider class. Exactly. Fantastic. It's coming here. Let's see what data we receive. So we receive the complete data, JSON data, hopefully here. Yes, we have received it. And now what system is actually doing is just going ahead and creating a new order. Uh, yeah, order ID 50, 58 will be created with a new date, inserting the data, fantastic. To serialize the data again and just set the response. Uh, I hope, yeah, of course. Uh, let's go and check the order right away in the system. So with order number 58, execute. Voila, order is created and you see the value as Donald Trump over here, 999 US dollars. It, it has pasted my records, posted my records into the SAP system. Fantastic. So that's how you implement the post call with a simple REST survey. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up on this video if you like this and you want me to create more content like this free on YouTube. Uh, just do support this channel and also share this with your colleagues and friends. With that, uh, in the next video, we will go ahead and see how to integrate this with the Fury application, how to call this, this custom REST service with Fury application using a normal HGX call. You can also do it as without a Fury. You can do a simple HTML based page. You can call this uh, Odata service. That's also the REST service also possible. With that, I'm about signing out. Thank you so much for attending this session and I will see you in the next video.